Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, an FAA funding bill may be headed to the president, electric flight technology takes a leap forward, Skydive Myrtle Beach is back in the news. I'm Brie Cross, it's July 8th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It looks like an FAA funding bill has finally passed through Congress, but it's not exactly a long-term funding bill. It's been announced that a bipartisan, bicameral agreement was reached on an FAA funding extension through September 30, 2017. Key players in the crafting of this short-term funding bill released the following joint statement that said in part, quote, We have reached an agreement on an FAA extension that provides much-needed stability for our aviation system through September 2017. This bill includes significant airport security reform as well as critical aviation safety provisions and time-sensitive enhancements for air travelers. Among the numerous issues included in this stopgap legislation, both EAA and AOPA released a joint statement saying that third-class pilot medical certification reform has been included in the bill. It's reported that this new bill will be forwarded to the president before the July 15th expiration of the FAA's current funding authorization. Siemens researchers have developed a new type of electric motor that with a weight of just 110 pounds delivers a continuous output of about 260 kilowatts, which converts to about 350 horsepower. That's a lot of ponies for 110 pounds. This record-setting propulsion system successfully completed its first public flight earlier this week in Germany, where it powered an extra 330 LE aerobatic airplane. This advance means that hybrid electric aircraft with four or more seats will now be possible. The extra 330LE, which weighs about 2,200 pounds, serves as a flying testbed for the new propulsion system. As an aerobatic airplane, we are told is particularly well suited for taking the components to their limits through testing and enhancing their design. It's reported the company will be contributing this technology to the cooperative project that Siemens and Airbus agreed to in April 2016 for driving the development of electrically powered flights. Germany's aeronautic research program supported the development of the motor. The Extra 330LE was created in cooperation with Siemens, Extra Aircraft, MT Propeller, and Pipistrel. After the break, skydivers meet with County Council. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. We have an update on our continuing coverage of the skydiving operation known as Skydive Myrtle Beach being shut down by the County Council for numerous alleged FAA violations. Now officials from Skydive Myrtle Beach will make a presentation to the Horry County Council next week in an effort to have its closure reversed. According to the Grand Strand Daily Newspaper, the claims of 112 violations used by the Horry County Department of Airports to make its case to the FAA for closure of the business are not actually violations at all. But the FAA accepted those claims and went along with the county's decision to close the business, which operated at Grand Strand Airport. In our previous coverage of the story, it was reported that the FAA never confirmed that violations existed. Skydive Myrtle Beach is claiming that if the alleged violations are proved to be false, the county could be in violation of FAA grant assurance policies regarding aeronautical activities on the airport. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim brings up a subject that he is personally tuned into. A recent accident reminds us that test flying is a serious business. Here is this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. I wanted to take a moment to recognize the fact that the aviation family lost two of its most treasured assets and persons in the last few days as a Bell Helicopter 525 relentless prototype went down during flight testing. For all my years in flight tests, both through my established work and in my schooling and in the work I've done with uh, folks in the test pilot community, the thing I have found 
most specifically about this community is that it is a meticulous arbiter of what an aircraft or a system or avionics or flight control or whatever the case may be needs to do to make aviation safe. Uh, flight testing is far from the glamorous occupation that most people seem to think it is. It is usually pretty boring, pretty meticulous, uh, dependent on careful record keeping, uh, meticulous observation, and minute detail. Uh, things are done a knot or a fraction of a knot at a time, or tens or hundreds of feet maximum down to fractions of a foot. It is a matter of recording the worst case scenarios, the far end and beyond flight envelopes that have been established by engineering folks. It is a matter of not only defining what the rules are, but what happens when the rules are broken. Flight testing is serious business. It requires serious players. It is fascinating, it is rewarding, and at times it can be deadly. So when something like this tragedy occurs and others that have gone beforehand, I just wanted to pipe up for a second and just simply say there are really great men and women out there. I've been pleased to be a member and work within that community, and I have been, without exception, impressed by the integrity, the commitment, the passion, the accuracy, and more important than anything else, the driven nature of what flight testing has turned out to be in this day and age. God bless them all. Our prayers and our sympathies go out to the Bell Helicopter family. And most of all know that aviation is safer because of people like those. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, DJI improves their geofencing system. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. DJI has introduced an improved version of its geofencing system to the DJI Go app that controls its Phantom and Inspire aerial platforms. The geospatial environment online software will help pilots avoid flying drones near airports and other sensitive locations. The Spirit Airlines pilot under representation by Alpha have requested National Mediation Board intervention in their collective bargaining negotiations. The pilots have been in talks with the airline for 18 months and are 11 months past the amendable date of their contract. The Academy of Model Aeronautics has announced a new resource for educators and outreach volunteers. An AMA day camp has been created for educators seeking guidance for how to promote and instruct model aviation. Model aviation is an exceptional STEM resource. Commander Andrew Bollinger took over command of Navy Air Test and Evaluation Squadron 30 last month in Point Magoo, California. The squadron's mission is to provide research, development, test, and evaluation of unmanned fixed and rotary wing aircraft and weapon systems. Executive AirShare has announced a majority recapitalization in partnership with a group led by Kansas City-based family investment firm Koran Companies. Koran Companies is a long-term customer of Executive AirShare and will focus on growing the nation's third largest fractional aircraft provider. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
Creativity and initiative are key to the success of any aviation business, but it looks like an airport manager may have taken these virtues and turned them into a criminal activity. The Minneapolis Star Tribune reports that Glenn Burke allegedly stole money while he was a manager of South St. Paul Municipal Airport. He has reportedly been charged with seven counts of theft by swindle. According to court documents, Burge absconded with nearly $109,000 between 2009 and 2015. He is accused of depositing checks made out to the city or the airport into an unauthorized bank account and then withdrawing money for himself. It was found that Burke had opened the account in 2006 using the name SSP Airport Fuel Company, but the city says no such division exists. Burke turned himself into authorities earlier this week and is on paid administrative leave while the case is adjudicated. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday.